Hey guys, I'm back with another video. This is part two of our Powerpuff Girl. So, um, this video we are focusing on coloring our model. Before I start coloring, I always decimate my um, my models so they're not as dense and the render time won't be as long and we don't want the file size so big. So, um, I'm starting off with bubbles. Um, I'm also changing majority of her body to subsurface material and some of her body to opaque and I'll show you why later on. First I'm doing her eyes. Um, to get her eye glossy all I have to do is um, paint all black and then turn down the roughness to give it that glossy look. I'm also turning on and off post-processing. Um, just so I could have like an idea what the render version would look like. So um, if you see me stop and render, um, that's why. Just trying to get, you know, a notion of what the finished product would be. And as you can see, um, the subsurface materials are looking good. I am um, going back and forth, um, making sure that um, I have everything um, as far as the reference photo that you just saw. Again, I was using a coloring book page. Um, I forgot to add the glares in her eyes, so I just added a spear, flattened it, and positioned it to where I want the glares to lay. Okay, so her shirt is subsurface material. When I tried to um, add the black in, um, it looked kind of funny. So I turn it to opaque to make the black more richer and darker. So that's what I meant by some of her body material is opaque and then some of it is subsurface. Sometimes you might have to remesh your model um, if you're trying to paint on it. So for example, I'm trying to paint in her sock and it looks all low quality and blocky. So I had to remesh it up to about 300 and paint in her sock and then I decimated it after I paint, painted it in on the high polygons. This was so um, fun to do. By the way, guys, please comment below what other characters um, I should do next. So again, I turn on post-processing just to see how the shadows look, how the colors look, and it's all coming together beautifully. Now I'm doing Buttercup. I'm trying to get her hair right. I'm a perfectionist, I know, but um, just have fun with it, you guys. Um, like I said, coloring is my favorite part because that's when the 3D model actually comes to life, adding color to it. Um, so this is like my favorite step of modeling and texturing. So now, um, as you can see, uh, I'm doing the same thing like I did with bubbles. Um, once I add color, I could kind of see, okay, I need to move her eye people around, her eyes around, just to make it look good. Um, I will tell you, like, this was a challenge for me, but I'm glad I overcame it. Um, I want to try to do more complex characters and models. Um, you know, practice make perfect. Um, so you practice every day, you get better and better at it. So thank you for, you know, tuning in and joining me on my preview journey. So right now to get that um, line, that black line across her shirt, all I did was a split tool. And I'm doing the same thing with her sock. I used the split tool to split her shoe from her sock. And then again, I had to box to remesh her shoes. So when I paint it, it doesn't look low quality and blocky. It's coming together beautifully, you guys. Like, And then um, on to Blossom. So my other favorite thing that I love, love to do was the Chemical X bottle. And I just used the refraction uh, for it to look like glass. Um, with Blossom, um, I'm just going in making sure I decimate first and then start coloring um, to make sure my polygons aren't like 
200,000 polygons so you don't need that um, and then I'm going in and doing her skin and then I realized you guys her hair <laughs> I'm missing her long hair uh, so I use a cube uh, for her for her hair flatten it and then I use the move tool to give it like a wave and I use the, the crease tool um, to um, separate some of her hair and I accidentally was tapping on the wall layer so that's why you probably see some bumps back there but disregard that <laughs> so now I'm coloring her hair and her hair bow and I am using a reference just to make sure I have the colors right in the, in the right places so looking at a reference for coloring is great too or if you want to sketch it out with color it now I'm just adding in um, layers and spears again on her eyes. And now I'm repositioning the eye now that I've colored it and I can see, okay, this model, this this eye layer is, you know, too far back. So I just, you know, pull it up, readjust it. It looks so great, you guys. I'm excited. Please um, don't forget to like um, and subscribe. It really helps. <laughs> Okay, so another thing that I'm trying something um, different to is creating sets. So usually when I do a model, I just, you know, do the model itself. But this time I added a background. So um, I like to tell a story. Um, telling a story makes your um, art more dynamic. So the story behind this is, you know, they broke into the laboratory to steal the chemical X. So what's behind them is the wall and the door to the laboratory. So um, that's the story behind this image. And with the chemical X, I didn't want to do black. I wanted to do like a different color. So I did like almost like a wine burgundy, just so you can see the reflections um, in it better. And now I'm doing her sock, as you can see. Um, same thing, like I said, um, they were pretty easy to model because their shapes were basic. And now um, I am repositioning. Uh, I'm using my cameras to see how I want the final render uh, to be. Right now, um, I'm working on the door. I'm adding, I'm going to add a sign that says lab. Um, this is my first time making like a little mini set. This is not nothing like extravagant i basically just use planes to throw up the wall and then throw up the door and the sign because uh, i want the focus to be on them and not the background so the background is really not that busy it's simple so um that's how i did that and i just drew you know the word lab nothing fancy and then again i'm just um making sure i have everything smoothed out i'm writing chemical x on the bottle that looks great and then i'm going to add um a little uh i forgot what you call it we'll just say a metal sheet yes most lab doors have like a metal sheet at the bottom and then i'm adding some screws to make it look a little bit more industrial so that's what I'm doing there. Awesome. And then that's about it, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like and subscribe. Please comment below what characters you want me to do next. Um, the last step is lighting. Um, and I think I had like three lights. So I wanted to light the inside of the lab. Since the door is open, I have light coming outside of the lab door. I lit them from the um, top left side and then their right side. And then I had a backlight um, from the light from the lab. So the lab lights, I wanted like this neon at first, but then I was like, red looks very good. So I did red. 
and then um, I did a backlight of red as well on their um, on their bodies, which came out perfect. So, like I said, you guys, thank you for tuning in. Um, please enjoy the rest of the video. Thank you.